Ahmad Samdin. Madam Deputy Speaker, may I have your permission to address questions 15 to 17 in the order paper and written PQs filed by Mr. Christopher D'Souza for the sitting on or after the 6th of July, please. Yes, please proceed. Madam, the Interagency Task Force on Mental Health and Wellbeing has conducted a review of existing mental health and wellbeing programs and developed preliminary recommendations to support the mental health needs of all members of society, including youth and seniors. The task force recommendations are aimed at creating a more caring and more inclusive society where all can seek help and be supported to achieve mental health and well-being and can participate meaningfully in our society. The task force is currently embarking on a consultation exercise from the 30th of May to the 7th of August 2022 to seek the views of the public on its preliminary recommendations. The findings from the public consultation will enable the task force to refine the recommendations and develop a national strategy on mental health and well-being. Following this, indicators will be developed to measure the implementation progress and the effectiveness of the strategy. The task force has proposed 12 preliminary recommendations in three focus areas. The first focus area is improved accessibility, coordination, and quality of mental health services. The second is a strengthening of services and support for youth mental well-being. And the third is to improve workplace well-being measures and employment support. Some of the recommendations include designating first stop touch points for easier wayfinding of mental health services, standardizing processes and systems between social and healthcare providers for better coordination of care, and equipping frontline service providers with the relevant mental health knowledge and competencies to support their clients. For our youth, we want to promote the positive use of technology and social media and propose to develop a parent's toolbox to enable parents to better support their children's social emotional well-being. At the workplace, we propose to improve mental well-being support systems and work-life harmony strategies and equip employers with knowledge on supporting persons with mental health needs. In addition, there is a need to improve access to vocational training and increase job opportunities for persons with mental health conditions. To promote mental health awareness and literacy in the population, the Health Promotion Board, HPB, launched a national campaign in October 2021 titled, It's OK to Reach Out. The campaign aims to normalize discussion about and increase understanding of mental health issues. The campaign encourages us to reach out for help and, where possible, reach out to provide help. The campaign includes community dialogue sessions, activity-based workshops and educational webinars where participants learn more about mental well-being and equip themselves with practical coping tips, as well as how to reach out to seek support and support others. To complement this national campaign, HPB also rolled out MindSG, an online portal featuring resources curated by mental health experts to provide Singaporeans with credible, reliable, and convenient access to important and relevant content. HPB will be launching the second installment of the It's OK to Reach Out national campaign in the coming months. There are existing mental health services to cater to the needs of persons with mental health conditions and their caregivers. Caregivers of elderly care recipients in particular, those who exhibit self-harm or aggressive behaviors, can call the Institute of Mental Health's 24-hour mental health helpline at 6389-2222 to seek help for managing a crisis situation. Where necessary, IMH will also make home visits to provide crisis interventions. When the acute psychiatric condition is stabilized, the elderly care recipients may be referred for follow-up at the outpatient clinics at the restructured hospitals, where their care would be overseen by healthcare professionals trained in mental health, including psychogeriatricians. In the community, the Agency for Integrated Care has worked with social service agencies to set up community intervention teams which can provide further support for these elderly care recipients through psychosocial therapeutic intervention and counseling. Thank you, ma'am.
Thank you very much. Um, I have two SQs. Uh, the first, you know, is really on my question about the focus on elderly. I mean, I'm very appreciative of the three focus areas as well as the 12 rec recommendations that we are seeking consultation um, on. However, in 2020, we saw the highest number of elderly suicides since 1991. And while in 2021, the number has gone down slightly, um, I think it remains to be seen, you know, what, what the future might hold. Um, and in any case, really, the vocabulary around elderly mental health is really much less socialized. Many still consider it very taboo. And I Ms. think... Ms. Nadia, please ask your question. Yes, sorry. So my question is, um, I, will the... Will the task force consider focusing really as a special focus area on elderly mental health and their caregivers mm -hmm. as well? Uh, the second part is, I think mm -hmm. I appreciate focus area one, um, but I think we need to be realistic that in order to have better access, quality and coordination of these services, we also need to have more resources because um, you know, AIC, Comet, Crest tend to be really overstretched and all the good work that is done in supporting- Start to ask your question, please. Um, is there, does the task force plan on providing more manpower and resources other than just providing um, literacy and raising education? Thank you. I thank the member for her questions, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. If I may address the second one first. Uh, the task force is not planning only on raising literacy and providing education. Uh, we're looking at the entire strategy and the way in which we approach the deployment of resources, the training of professionals, the referral of clients across the ecosystem, as well as the relationship between the healthcare and social care parts um, of our, of our health, uh, mental health infrastructure. Um, so within that space, uh, there will be a need to look at the allocation of resources and the deployment of personnel. But I think we have to start at getting the strategy and the systems in place first, and then the task force will move on to um, other subtasks uh, following on from, from that. Um, in, indeed, uh, there, it is important to, to consider the needs and um, support for the elderly and uh, who have mental health illnesses and, and their caregivers. Um, I would make uh, uh, three broad points. The first is that uh, for the seniors' mental health, um, we need to look at it a little bit differently, uh, partly because they often have concomitant associated chronic health conditions, and both need to be dealt with together holistically. Um, so it is a combined mental and health approach, and that is what the professionals have been doing already. Uh, which is the second point, which is that uh, there are resources that are available, there are professionals working in this space. I mentioned the psychogeriatricians and the other teams in my earlier answer. Another example would be um, uh, the Live Well, Age Well program, which is funded by MOH, jointly implemented by HPB and the People's Association, um, to augment existing seniors programs with a focus on mental well-being, and more than 13,000 unique seniors participated in the program in 2021. Um, the third point is that some of the efforts that we're making around the larger strategy of mental health will directly improve access to and services for the elderly. For example, the extent to which we're looking at the community care providers to bring some of these services closer, um, closer to home, including, for example, elder care centers. One result. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. So I thank the SMS for sharing the recommendations. I hear the efforts by the interagency task force in outreaching and getting this. So my question is really on, for those who are not reaching out, are there plans to increase these nodes or networks to allow them to be uh, in a way screened or detected so that we can prevent uh, issues uh, in terms of mental health? Thank you. Madam Deputy Speaker, yes, we do want to increase the awareness of um, the need for mental health screening among the healthcare professionals and social care professionals that are working in this space, as well as to provide them the tools to do the screening and then the onward referral. So that's very much part of our strategy. Ms. Tin Pei Ling. Um, thank you, SMS. I would like to ask, um, I think for IMH, which is uh, usually the first part of call, for uh, elderly with um, you know, exhibiting self-harm and aggressive behaviours, possibly 
uh, induced by certain types of dementia, for example, caregivers are often at a loss. So apart from calling the hotline uh, for their remote assistance, sometimes they will choose to go to the IMH itself. Um, I would like to ask whether there have been instances whereby they had to be uh, turned away or is the capacity of IMH uh, sufficient to deal with such cases? And related to that is that sometimes caregivers may feel that it's more expeditious to send to a nearby restructured hospital uh, because if there's self-harm, there may be personal dangers so they may feel that it's safer to send to those settings and whether uh, restructured hospitals are equipped uh, to support uh, such instances. Thank you. Madam, uh, thank the member for the question. The issue of dealing with um, an elderly person who has a mental health condition who then has a caregiver requiring assistance to deal with that situation um, there isn't a single solution, just as there isn't a single archetype or a single set of challenges. Um, indeed, the helpline is there uh, for advice as well as uh, to coordinate onward referral. Indeed, the uh, family, the caregiver can bring the, um, the elderly, the senior uh, to IMH if that's where they think the, the, the mental health condition is best dealt with. And they can bring them to the restructured hospitals who are also equipped to deal with vulnerable persons, uh, persons who are entirely dependent and people with acute mental health conditions deteriorating. The restructured hospitals and their emergency departments are. However, I, I think uh, at the beginning, uh, the member talked about IMH being the first port of call. Uh, and one of the things that we're looking at within the task force is actually to perhaps shift that perception that IMH has to both be the first port of call as well as the only port of call. Um, and, and I hope that's not what she was characterizing um, the situation as. And we really do need um, a wider surface area, a wider spread of nodes, networks, um, the community organizations, the healthcare community, as well as the social care community to participate in that response to support the mental health needs of our seniors. And that's part of what the task force is going to try and do.